fear of public speaking. I was told that one of the greatest fears people have is speaking in public. I have to speak a lot in public, in temples, and as conferences, as marriages, and funerals. On transmit radio and events on live television, it is part of my job. I remember once occasions five minutes before I were to give a public talk, when fear overwhelmed me. I hadn't repaired anything. I had no idea what I was going to say. About three hundred people. Were sitting in the halls, expecting to be inspired. They had given up their evening to hear me talk. I began thinking to myself, "What if I can't think of anything to say? What if I say the wrong thing? What if I make a fool of myself?" On fear begins with the thoughts "What if?" and continue with something disastrous. I was released in the future and squeezed negativity. I was being stupid. I knew I was being stupid. I knew on the theory, but it wasn't working. Fear kept rolling in. I was in trouble. That evening, I developed a trick. What we call a monk's trick, a skill for me, which overcame my fear then, and which has worked ever since. I decided that it didn't matter if my audience enjoyed that talk or not, as long as I enjoyed my talk. I decided to have fun. Now, whenever I give a talk, I have fun. I enjoy myself. I tell funny story often as my hours at pens, and laugh at them with the audience. Online radio in Singapore, I told attendees predictions about the certainty of the future. Singaporeans are interested. In thing economies, Argentina read it once that the world would run out of paper for banks, not and mental for coins. So the people would have to find something else for everyday transaction. He read it that they would use little pellets of chicken seeds for money. People would go around with their pockets. Full of chicken seed. Banks would pay for of the stuff, and robbers would try to steal it. Rich people would be so proud of how much chicken seed they owned, and poor people would dream of winning a piece pie of chicken seed. In the lottery, government would focus excessively on the chicken situation in their county, and environmental and social issues could be considered later. Once there was enough chicken seed to go around, was it there? A central difference between pennies, coins, and chicken seeds. None. I enjoy telling that story. It makes a pointed statement about our current cultures, and it is fun. The Singaporean listeners love it. I figured out once that if you decide to have fun when you give a public talk, then you relax. It is biologically impossible to have fear and fun at the same time. 
whether I am relaxed, idea flow released into my mind during my talk, then leaves from my mouth with the smoothness of eloquence. Moreover, the audience doesn't guess porous when it is fed. A Tibetan monk once explained the importance of making the audience laugh during a talk. Once they open their mouth, he says, then you can draw in the pill of wisdom. I never repair my talks. I repair my heart and mind instead. Monks in Thailand are strange never to repair at talk. But to be repair to talk without not at any time. Iswa Magabhuta, the second most important Buddhist festival of the year in Northwest Thailand, as well as Atantha Monastery, was known Papong, with some 200 monks and many thousands of slave people. Atantha was very famous. It was my fifth year as a monk. After the evening service, it was time for the main talk. Ajanta would usually give a talk as just a major occasion, but not always. Sometimes, he would look down the light of monks, and if his eyes stopped as yours, then you were in trouble. He would ask you to give the sermons, even though I was shut out young monk compared to many others ahead of me. One could never be sure of anything around Ajanta. Ajanta looked down the line of monks. His eyes read me and went but I silently sighed with relief. Then his eye came back up and lies again, guilt where they stopped from Ajanta orders give the main sermons there were no way so I had to give a an prepared talk in Thai for an hour in front of my teacher fellow monks and thousands of lay people it didn't matter whether it was a good sermon or not it's matter only that I did it. Ajanta never told you whether it was good talk or not. That wasn't the point. Once he asked a very skilled Western monk to give a sermon to lay people who has assembled at his monastery for the weekly observance at the end of an hour. The monks began to wrap up his sermon in Thai. Ajanta interrupted him and told him to continue for another hour. That's what taught. Still, he did it. As he repaired to finish up after struggling for the second hours in Thai, Ajanta ordered another hour of sermons. It was impossible. Westerners only know so much time. You end up repeating yourself over and over. The audience gets bored, but there wasn't any choice. At the end of the third hour, most people had slept anyway, and the ones remaining were talking among themselves. Even the mosquitoes and the ones lizards has gone to sleep. At the end of the third hour, Ajanta ordered another hour. The western monk opined. He said that's after shut and a 
appearance and the top did end up to the fourth hour. When you have filmed the very depth of the audience response, you no longer fear speaking in public. That's what, how we were tennis by Rich Ajanta.